Welcome to part 3 of our iPhone photo editing video tutorial. In this part I'm going to show you two of perhaps the most important modules in Snapseed and those are the Tune Image and the Selective Adjust modules. Now before we can do this let's just open up another image and we'll see what we can do. And so I've picked this image now select it, go ahead and use it and let's see what we can do here. Now if you look at the image really the thing that stands out the most about this image is the fountain and you can see how sun is in fact shining through the water in the air which makes this image so cool. So what we could do perhaps is we could make this essential detail of the image stand out even more or we could perhaps somehow try to more emphasize the fact that there's sun actually shining through the fountain. So for that, what we can do is we can go to select, Selective Adjust. And if we want to work with Selective Adjust, the first thing we want to do is go to the plus icon at the bottom and then select the point we want to work on or the part of the image we want to work on. And you can see as you move around your finger you get this uh, you get this aim thing moving around what you want to aim for is the color you want to work with. So in my case, I'm working with white fountain water, so I'll select this color. And now, what you can also do is you can use two fingers to really change how big of an area you're going to affect. So if I make this bigger, I'm affecting essentially all the whites in the image at once, but that's not exactly my goal. I, want, I just want to work with the fountain, with the water, not with the sky. So I'll make it small and I'll change it to something like this so that all the fountain is in but not the clouds. Okay, once we have that, we can once again work our way vertically through the menu and we can change brightness, contrast and saturation. So, if I want to emphasize this part of the image, it's probably a good idea to start by increasing contrast. So we'll do that. And to increase contrast, we just swipe uh, horizontally across the screen. And here, you can see that just by increasing contrast a tiny bit up to 40, we can make this image already more interesting and the fountain more look more dramatic. So if you click on this eye icon at the bottom, and then the blue dot disappears and you really see what you're working on. And here again on the top right corner, you can compare the before and after effect. So, so this is what we have now. This, uh, this is what we started with. As you see now, the image looks already a bit more dramatic. Okay, so now once we have that, <clears throat> we can once again select the blue dot. We can also adjust the saturation. And now, as I said before, we really have sun shining through the fountain. So if we perhaps increase the saturation, we can emphasize this aspect of the image more. Because obviously the sun is uh, a bit of a yellowish in color. And if we, if we make this fountain more yellow, we really emphasize more the fact that there's sun in the fountain. So that's a cool thing to do. And finally, we can do brightness. And we can just increase it a bit, not too much, because if we increase it too much, you see we get areas blown out, and that's never a good thing. But if we increase it a bit, just up to something like 10, I think we get the best effect. Yep, that's what I'm going looking for. So what we can do now is just save changes, the image is processing, and we have this. Now, next, if we want to make this image even better, I would go to Tune Image Module. And unlike Selective Adjust, in which we just changed one part of the photo, in Tune Image we're going to change, look, uh, work on everything at once. So let's see how that happens. And Tune Image is really simple, but at the same time it's probably the most powerful module there is in Snapseed. It's really what I use most often, and you should be doing the same. So once again in Tune Image you get a bunch of different uh, menus that you can slide through vertically, and you can change values for each of them, if you move horizontally. Uh, brightness really changes how bright or dark the image is. Uh, ambience, so brightness is kind of straightforward. Uh, you see you increase it, it all gets bright. You decrease it, it gets dark. 
Now I usually like to change brightness at the very end, so I'll leave it at zero for now. Uh, next we have ambience, and that's really one of the more powerful tools of Snapseed. I love it. And what you can do here is, with ambience, you can bring out detail that you wouldn't otherwise see. So here, you can see, if we, if we make, if we increase the ambience, everything, the sky, the trees, the shadows, become more alive, but at the same time, the image kind of doesn't look natural anymore. So obviously, we're not going to leave it at 100, but we could leave it at something like 30. I think it would work quite well for this image. And in fact, in most cases, I increase ambience just a bit, up to 20 or 30, and leave it there. And that's, that's what gives me the best results. So next we have contrast. So if there's no contrast, it looks really, well, pale, I guess. There's a lot of contrast, it just looks too extreme. So for contrast, once again, it's a good idea to increase it a bit. And let's see how we compare it to what we had. And I think something like 10 will do well for contrast, at least for now. We can always come back later and change it. Next there's saturation. And that's really just how colorful the image is. So here I'll just add a bit more color. You can also take color away. Um, you can go half black and white or essentially black and white if you want to. Or, or you can make the image more colorful. It's really all up to you. And I'm going to go ahead and do something like 20 for now. And finally there's the white balance. And this is really probably the best thing in Snapseed. And what you can do with white balance is you can either make the, all the colors become more warm or, or even golden as we're doing now, or you can make them cold by going into negatives and then everything gets kind of blue and cold and not so nice. And if you move more to the left or right, you can get all these crazy colors, but usually I just keep the values low. In this image, I just think it's a nice idea to add this golden tone. I know it's not natural, I know it's crazy, I just think it looks nice. So, you know, why not? Why not do it now? And yeah, I think I'll make it really extreme and I'll go to something like something like 35 will be good or perhaps even 40. Now that I have this, I said I would come back to brightness later. So let's just do it now. And let's make the brightness something like minus 15. Now, this is quite crazy already, and I think I'll, I'm will i even going to make the saturation a bit smaller. Now what I'm doing here is, by taking away saturation, I'm really taking the blues and the greens out of the image, and then the image can look even more golden. And in fact, I'll make it look something like this. Now, this doesn't really look natural, but it certainly looks like a beautiful evening scene, and I like it for that. So I'm going to go ahead and save changes. Now, with Tune Image, there's no one right or wrong way to do this. I mean, there are 10 different ways we could have worked on this image, and in fact, that's what I often do. I just take the same image and I keep working and reworking it until I find the best combination of saturation, brightness, white balance, ambience, and contrast that really gives me the kind of results I want. But often you don't know what you're gonna like the most, so you just keep trying trial and error until you find what you like the best. So once we have something we like, we just want to make sure we don't forget to save it to camera roll. So with that done, we can move on to the next image. And here, I want to quickly show you something cool we can do with the image we already worked with, which is the black and white umbrella image. And we have that saved right here. And we'll select Use. And here we have this image. One thing people often don't realize about a tune image in Snapseed is that you can also use this for images that are already black and white. Now obviously we could change brightness, contrast, saturate uh, if we wanted to, but we can also change white balance and we can make the image either more golden or add a bit of a sepia effect, or we can make it look blue and really cold, or in fact any other color we're interested in. And what I sometimes like to do is, I just like to increase the white balance to something like 20. And you see, we started with this, which was perfectly black and white, uh, no tone whatsoever, but by adding this 
this the snappy effect we can make the image look a bit older and nicer in some way it looks warm it looks antique I, I like the feel of it so I'm gonna go ahead and save this so it's just something you can do with your black and white photos and it doesn't always look better if you do it but it's just one of the tricks you can use and then you can see if you like the results or not Okay, finally, uh, to really drive this point uh, across, I'm going to show you one more photo and I'm going to show you how you can use Tune Image to really make it stand out. Now, you might recognize this photo. I've used this on Instagram a lot and it's, in fact, my most popular Instagram photo up to this date. It has about 1,000 likes and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And so, what I'm going to try to do now is just recreate the editing I did now I did this about a year ago, so I might not get exactly the same, but I hope I'll be able to teach you some valuable lessons here. So the first thing we want to start with is of course straighten and crop. And if you look carefully, you might notice that the horizon isn't perfectly straight. And for an image like this, a straight horizon will probably work best. So let's just do that and correct the horizon. Now it's not a big difference, so you have, we have to be really careful here. I think if I rotate the image by just about one degree, I should really get what I'm looking for. So, let's see. Yep, that looks better. Uh, by the way, if for whatever reason, what you do doesn't work so well, using this back arrow, you can revert changes, and you'll get back to the image you uploaded to Snapseed. But I'm not going to do it here, so I'll just leave it at what we have now. So next we want to crop. Again, this is going to Instagram, so I'm going to select one by one. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. And now, the tricky part is choosing uh, the composition. Now this is a bit tricky because here, at the bottom, I have this fantastic shadow of the bicycle, which is really, really nice. And here at the top, I have sky, and sky that night was just spectacular. So it's really hard to get both, and I have to make some compromise here. So I think I'm just going to go for the rule of thirds and I'm going to make the heads of the children be roughly at the intersection of the two grid lines and also the C, the horizon, is going to be right on the grid line. So it's a classical composition but you can't really go wrong with this. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. So once I have this, I'm going to go to tune image and here is where all the magic happens. The first thing I want to do, and I often do this with sunset images, is increase ambience. Now in the previous image we increased ambience a bit, and it worked well. Here we're going to increase ambience a lot. And it doesn't look that natural anymore, but trust me, the result is going to be worth it. So what ambience really does here is it, it makes the details in the sky and also to some extent in the sea and on this, in the sand stand out more than they would otherwise. Like we started with this and the sky was, yeah, it was interesting, but this, the clouds didn't stand out as much as they do now. So it's the first thing we can do. Next, once we have this, uh, we can really make a big impact by decreasing brightness. And this is something uh, that might not seem intuitive, but really, if you decrease brightness quite a bit, you really make the uh, sky stand out, especially for sunset photos like this. Now, this is a bit too much. I think I'm going to settle for something like something like minus 40 for now or minus 35. You can always come back later and change it again. But by decreasing the brightness, I can make the bright parts of the sky stand out even more. Next, we'll look at contrast. It's probably a good idea to increase it just a bit. Yep, and what this does is it makes the sh it makes it increases the contrast between the silhouette and the surrounding areas. And it also makes the shadow on the beach stand out more. So I think I'll also leave it at something like twelve. And the one last thing we can do here is we can look at the white balance. And you know you can go all the way to golden if you feel like it, but honestly. I want to keep the sky blue in this photo because I think it's just so much more natural. So I'm going to increase uh, white balance, but I'm not going to go too high on it. I think something like uh, 15 or perhaps 20 might work best here. I think I'll even leave it to 15. And now once I have all of this, 
I think I'm going to go ahead and decre decrease the brightness even more. And I think 40 is what works best here. Now, I just want you to come look at this. Look at how wonderful it is. And compare it to what we started with. Now, that's a big difference. And if you think about this, we could make all of that within just, like, what? Three minutes using Snapseed. And that really shows me the power of this app more than anything else. So I'm going to go ahead, save this photo. Save it to Camera Roll. And upload it to Instagram if I hadn't already. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part of our iPhone photo editing video tutorial.